From hitch sliders and wind shackles to bed sliders and GoPro mounting solutions, selecting your first upgrades for your Jeep Gladiator can be a little daunting, but after two years of owning our Gladiator and running it hard, this is our list of the top 10 essentials that you might want to consider. You know you're gonna dig this. Awesome. Hitch slider from 4122. You know, we've been running this on our rig for over a year now and we have definitely left our mark on one mini rock. We've done videos on this before. It's a solid block of aluminum and just protects your hitch receiver from damage. There's a whole school of thought here that you don't need this, that it's going to ruin your departure angle, but I can tell you after running this hard in quite a few states across the country, we've never run into an issue, not even once with this affecting the departure angle. And we're in the school of thought of if you can protect an area on your investment, why not do it? We'll put up the website below and you can use the code FAR from Ordinary to get 10% off. Lower control arm skid plates. We picked these up from Rusty's uh, off-road shop. This is the very first upgrade that we ever put on our Jeep Gladiator after nicking the bottom of the lower control arm on our very first trail. We painted them orange in the very beginning and although the orange is still somewhat there, you can definitely tell that we've put these things through the paces. This is another one of those areas where there are people that say you probably don't need anything there. In fact, there are a lot of people who don't run anything there at all. But like I said before, I'm in the mindset of if you invested your money into this thing, you might as well put money into protecting some of those parts, especially if it's relatively inexpensive. Rear sway link reinforcements. We put these on after hearing and seeing multiple stories of people ripping out their sway brackets. So for us, it was just a preventative measure. We have seen instances where the sway link was popped off of the frame. This is just another good protective measure to protect your investment. There are two different companies that make these. Metal Cloak makes one. This is the one that we went with. Uh, but had I known that 4122 actually makes a smaller inconspicuous bracket for that area, I probably would have gone with that option instead. Apex Auto Links. This is another product that we've had on our Jeep Glider Mojave for over a year now, and they have performed well. They have not restricted any type of travel. This was my main concern in the very beginning, but there's different settings that you can put the Apex Auto Links on. We ran the largest version back when we had a uh, inch and a half spacer lift and 37 inch tires. We just had to cut a hole in the top to allow for travel. This is because we knew that we were going to eventually upgrade to a larger lift and I didn't want to order these links again. So you can run the larger size on a smaller lift. And yes, they do help. And yes, they are easy to operate. In fact, my 11 year old is in charge of uh, doing the airing down and airing up and undoing those links. So they're very easy to undo. They're very easy to fasten back. In fact, you don't even need to be completely level on the ground. All you have to do is fasten one side. And then when you start driving, the other side will automatically lock. Definitely want to check these out. They are pricey, but they are completely worth it, especially when you see people banging on their uh, links to get them back or pushing on the side of the vehicle when you're not level. Bed sliders from Red Rock. I wish we would have had these before we did Holy Cross. At any rate, the Mojave does not have these on the back. We put them on after Holy Cross and we have definitely used them. We have bashed that area several times across different trails in different states. We're very glad we put them on there. They do serve as a step now, so you can step in and kind of reach into the back because we've been doing a lot of camping stuff, so there is that part. They are starting to rust on the bottom. That's my only complaint. And also the end caps have popped off. At any rate, they're working. Uh, they continue to serve their purpose, and I definitely recommend these as probably one of the first essential mods, especially if you have a Mojave. 35s and an AEB lift. So why not 37s? If you don't know how you're gonna use your Jeep, I just recommend starting off simple because once you go into 37s, you do go into should you re-gear, there's a, just a rabbit hole of things that have to happen when you upgrade those tires. The ball joints are gonna wear faster. The inner liners of those are nylon, so they will wear. You won't see any play, but they will be worn. 35's AEV two inch lift. We had an inch and a half rock crawler spacer, uh, but there was a lot of things that were missing with that, the shock relocation brackets. Um, and other things to correct that geometry, which you really don't have to worry about if you're under two inches, but you do want to extend those shocks because you will hit those bump stops quite frequently. The shock stroke on all of the GT models is not very long, so eventually you want to get a longer shock. But 35s and AV, that will get you through most places and it will establish a baseline for the future. So then when you decide to upgrade to something else bigger in the future, you can run that same trail that you did before on 35s and the AEB and get a good side-by-side -side comparison. 
overhead Miley panel. This is from JCR Off-Road. We've installed all of their panels. They recently released a back panel for the back window, which I think we'll pick up eventually. But the overhead Miley has several benefits. You know, if you're going to any of these large events that you still use CB radio, it's a great spot to mount the CB. It holds quite a few of our books and guides where we're in different states. We hang all kinds of stuff from there. So it's absolutely useful, especially if you have to mount that CB, like I said. So look into that. One thing to note on the overhead Miley is you will have to drill some holes into the top of the frame. It's really not a big deal. I did it on my own and I'm not very mechanically inclined in that aspect, so you should be able to pull it off with no issues. Bullet point mounting systems. This thing has worked great. It holds our GMRS radio, it holds our tablet, it holds our phone, it holds our GoPro. There's quite a few different attachments and things you can put to it. There are a number of different companies who are making this one. I thought this one was cool because it's run by a veteran. We've not had any issues with it since installing it over a year ago. So it's definitely one of those must have essential upgrades, especially if you plan to film any of your adventures. Light bar and brackets. So there are two sides, you're either team light bar or you're not. We decided to go with the light bar because the entire setup, including the brackets, was under $1,000. The original round lights, some of those KC racks can go over for over $2,000 and we just don't run enough at light to justify spending that type of money on an upgrade like that. This light bar and these two pod lights are from Rough Country, they're the Black Series and they have worked great. We have put a cover over the light bar because it does whistle without it. The cover is uh, by a company called Aero Lids and they make uh, custom inserts that you can put in there. We designed our own insert and stuff that in there. We'll run this at night and it'll add ambient lighting into the cab and it won't blind the person in front of you but it'll add just enough light and then when you need to have light you just pull off the cover. They've worked great. We've had them on our rig for a year now. The brackets themselves are pillar brackets. They're Mojave specific. They're from a company called Bodyguard Bumpers. They're based out of Texas. These pillars we did a video on in the past. Uh, in fact, we did a whole video on the past on this whole setup. We'll link that above. Brackets have done great. Nothing has loosened up. I specifically like these brackets because they are Mojave specific. The cowl is different than the Rubicon. And also there's three points of attachment. You know, some of these other manufacturers that make these pillar brackets, there's only two points of attachment. And I have just seen at least one instance of that bracket being uh, ripped off in the wind when going down the freeway. Not the bodyguard bracket, but other manufacturer brackets. Look into these brackets. Look into the light bar. It was easy to wire everything up, especially if you already have those auxiliary switches we just wired the light bar to one of the aux switches and then the pod lights on another and it has been working great for us bumper and winch shackle from 4122 the bumper is from rock hard 4x4 we initially went with rock hard because they're one of the few companies that stand behind flat towing it's an option to add on uh, extra clevises and these fit blue ox or demco tow bars we went with the aluminum series because the entire build on our jeep glider we wanted to keep things lightweight so we went with aluminum it was a little pricey but it's been completely worth it we also went with the worn evo 10s winch that sits right on top we've used the winch on the bumper a number of times and have not had an issue with it the winch shackle is from 4122 and we have used this quite a few times. Rock Hard offers a number of options on these bumpers from full width to mid width and everything in between. And they also offer a different style bumper. So if the grill width stubby aluminum is not your cup of tea, then they have several other options to choose from. One of the cool things about going with Rock Hard and specifically this bumper is you get to reuse your OEM fog lights. So another added bonus there. And again, if you're interested in this winch shackle, five different colors, including raw aluminum, 4122.com and use the code far from ordinary. I check and a bonus these floor liners from last fit are something I never considered until we planned a trip to Windrock the muddiest place in the entire world we were definitely glad we had these there a company called last fit sent us these for testing they're based out of California they fit remarkably well and they serve their purpose after we were done we just pulled them out rinsed them all off and they were done. So if you're in an area where there's gonna be any inkling of mud or snow and you wanna protect your carpet on the inside of your Jeep Gladiator, definitely think about picking these up. Also, we do have code for this one, Far Ordinary, and it will get you 15% off. That's it, that's our video. That's my list of top 10 essential mods and upgrades for your Jeep Gladiator. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And also, we did start a Patreon. We'll talk more about that on a future episode, but we'll throw up the link below, and we will see you next week.